There are seven continents on our planet. A continent is a large section of land that is separated from other areas of land. Most of the time, they are separated by water. The seven continents are North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. The country we are studying today is Brazil, and it is found on the South American continent. Brazil is the largest country in South America and the fifth largest country in the world. Its borders touch all but two of the countries in South America, and its capital is a city named Brasilia. Brazil started out the same as any other South American country. It was inhabited by native people who were eventually conquered, killed, and destroyed by European settlers and explorers. The only thing that was slightly different in this area was the fact that the native people in this area were in smaller tribes instead of larger cities and they were already at war with each other. Many different European countries came to the land of Brazil, but because Brazil speaks Portuguese, you might guess that it was Portugal that eventually won control of the area. When the colonies in Brazil were a little more established, they set out to make money by growing sugarcane and selling it to other countries. Other colonies had done this in the past and had made a lot of money doing this, so they thought they would try it too. Well, sugarcane plantations are a lot of work, and the Portuguese colonists began capturing native people and forcing them to work in the sugarcane fields. And with that, slavery was introduced. The colonists ran into problems with the native slaves, though. They were still dying from diseases that the colonists had brought with them, and they were kind of hard to catch. On top of that, the king back in Portugal eventually told them that they couldn't use natives as slaves anymore. So these colonists in the Brazil area, they jumped on board with a trend at the time, and this trend was buying and selling African slaves the Portuguese colonists, or Brazil, when it was all said and done, had used, used about 35% of all slaves that were trafficked in the world. An average slave would pay for himself after about two years of work. After that, it was considered free labor, and the sugarcane plantations in Brazil became some of the most prosperous plantations in the entire world. This time of slave trade was one of the most dark and shameful periods of human life on earth. There were a few people that always opposed it and fought to get rid of it, but most of the world saw, saw it as, a, as okay. Africa was in a state of constant bloody war, and the victorious African tribes were selling the tribes that they had conquered to the white slave traders. Maybe it seemed like Africans were selling themselves, and maybe that made it seem like it was okay. It's hard to say why people thought it was okay. Maybe it was because it seemed like the Africans were selling themselves. Or maybe people just didn't see all human beings as equal. Either way, the slave traders were always looking for new slaves. Slaves were one of the hottest commodities of the time. A commodity is something like wood, for example, or it could be a service that is used to make something else. It is a shameful thing that people were considered a commodity. When the slave traffickers bought slaves from Africa, they were packed into ships like sacks of wheat with no thought for their care nor survival. Millions of people died simply by being transported to the place where they would be sold into slavery. Although slavery ended around the same time in most of the world, 
Brazil was one of the last countries to officially get rid of it in 1888. An artist by the name of Jean-Baptiste Debray painted many, many scenes of slavery in Brazil. See, a lot of people in the world never really knew how horrible slavery was. They never saw the slave ships. They never saw families being torn apart. They, had, they just never saw the dark side of it. And it was his paintings that in part helped raise awareness of the inhumanity of slavery. Eventually, Brazil wanted to be separate from Portugal. They declared their independence from them in 1822. After their independence was recognized in 1825, they established a king, King Pedro I, and later his son, King Pedro II. They were great leaders and the people loved them. King Pedro II was left with no sons and he recognized that a new era of leadership was coming. Well, a military coup took over the leadership. A coup is when a group of people take control of the government by force. Well, King Pedro II did nothing to stop the coup. Eventually, after a lot of war and fighting, this military government gave way to elected leaders. And today, Brazil has a president and a form of government that is very similar to that of the United States. However, it wasn't until the year 2002 when there was finally a peaceful transfer of power from one president to the next. And it was on that day that Brazil could finally say that they had obtained political stability. See, this is a po an important thing to recognize. Historically, in any part of the world, in any time in history, the transfer of power from one leader to the next has always been one of the bloodiest and hardest things to do. And it is that very reason why most of the people choose to have an elected leadership and a form of government that is similar to that of the United States. Because it was really the United States Constitution that was the very first to establish a form of government where they could peacefully transfer power from one leader to the next. The Brazilian president today is a lady named Dilma Rousseff. She's a woman, and that's very rare for most of the powerful nations of the world. Even though almost everyone in Brazil is descended in some way or another from the native people, almost everybody speaks Portuguese. A little less than half of the people have light skin, and a little less than half of the people have brown skin. A smaller portion of the people, but still it's about 13 million people, have dark skin and are of African descent. Today, Brazilian Portuguese is quite a bit different from the European Portuguese. The differences are similar to American English and English from England. The language and the culture itself have a very distinct taste to them. It is a beautiful blend of European, native, and African cultures. Food in Brazil is not as spicy as some other Latin American countries. One of the most common types of foods and restaurants in Brazil is the churrascaria, or a steakhouse. In Brazil, they don't, they don't use steak sauce or barbecue sauce like Americans are used to. They prefer to bring out the flavor of the meat with salt, rock salt actually, and they love to cook lots of different kinds of meat. Brazil has the largest Catholic population of anywhere in the world. Christianity is definitely strong there. One of the world-famous landmarks is a giant statue of Christ with his arms outstretched overlooking the city of Rio de Janeiro. Although any sport can be found in Brazil, football, or soccer as we call it here, is by far the most popular sport. Brazil has the top soccer team in the world, and some of the most famous players in the world, like Ronaldinho, are from Brazil. Brazil is large enough that it has almost every type of climate and weather. It has snowy mountains, tropical beaches, and dense tropical jungles. 
the Amazon. You've probably heard of the Amazon jungles. Well, the Amazon is in Brazil, the northern part of Brazil. Some of the Brazilian jungles are so remote or so far away from anything else that civilization is near, and they're so hard to get to that there are places that have never had anything go in or out of there, ever. In fact, it is estimated that there are 67 native tribes living in remote parts of Brazil that have never had contact from the outside world. Can you imagine that? That there's still people living in a jungle in Brazil that have, n that have never had contact with the outside world. They have never seen a car, never seen a boat even, other than the canoes that they probably have. They don't have any of the modern conveniences. Think about that. One final fascinating thing about Brazil is what it has done in regards to money. In today's world, money is a funny thing. Think of a dollar. If you're holding a dollar in your hand and you want to pay for something, that dollar only has worth because all of us here agree that that dollar is worth something. To explain that a little, for example, a dollar is worthless to your dog. He could care less about a dollar. But if, you're, but if you were to hold out a doggy treat or a piece of meat, you could probably get him to do anything you wanted. Now, I don't know if you've ever pondered this, but money can only exist and have value when everybody believes in it. That's funny. It's not a religion, but money has to have people believe in it, have faith in it in order for it to work. We have to all have this common belief that a dollar is worth something. When people lose faith in a certain type of money, that system of money collapses. Well, in Brazil, the people lost their faith in money. Inflation was out of control. Inflation means that prices of everything go up really fast. For example, today a candy bar costs 40 cents, and, and next week it costs a dollar, and then the week after that it costs $1.50, and, and then the week after that you're all, already paying $2.50 for the same thing that you barely, that you paid 40 cents for just a few weeks prior to that. Inflation is a hard thing to deal with. Well, the government in Brazil was printing too much money, trying to keep up with this inflation. The prices of things were changing daily. It was changing so fast, in fact, that when somebody would go out to eat, they would request that they would pay for their meal in the beginning rather than the end because the prices would probably go up by the time they even finished their meal. President after president tried to fix this money problem, but failed each time. And each time a president failed, the people lost more faith in the system and lost more faith in their money. And that just made the problem worse. It seemed that it was only a matter of time until the entire economic system in Brazil would fail and the government would collapse. Because, well, that's what happens when inflation gets too bad and money becomes worthless. Well, Brazil had a new elected president, and his finance minister had no idea how to fix things. Of course he had no idea how to fix things, because everything that made sense wasn't working, and they had no idea how to stop inflation and get the economy back on track. Well, he called two old friends that he knew from college who had studied economics. These two friends had a crazy idea. Most people that they'd shared this idea with never thought it would work, and it just was kind of a crazy idea that they had. Well, this new finance minister called them up and said, I need your help. We need to fix things in Brazil. And he basically pleaded for them to try it, that they were Brazil's only hope in his mind. Well, this is what their idea was. It was a simple idea. And this is why nobody thought it would work, because it was so simple. Their idea was to just make up a new type of money. Just make it up. It didn't have anything like gold backing up. It didn't even have a paper bill associated, it, associated with it. It was entirely and totally made up. But they knew the one principle 
that money doesn't have to have anything behind it. It just has to have people believe in it. So what they did was introduce this as a new type of money or currency. And they made the rule that this, this money could not change. It couldn't change value. And they called it the real, or the real currency. They still had the old currency, and they would publish daily how much of the old currency you could get for one real. But eventually, the real became trusted. And the people embraced it enough, after a few years of using it, that Brazil was able to switch from the old currency to the new one and start printing a new type of money called the real. Well, this new faith in this new type of money literally turned their economy around. It saved Brazil. The people were happy. They could buy things again, and that they had faith in their currency. There was finally stability in their economy. This move saved Brazil, and they have grown ever since. Brazil is a country with a fascinating story. I love the story of Brazil. Like all countries, the people are who they are because of their story. This land is a beautiful, happy place that welcomes visitors and people from anywhere. Oh.